Hi everybody. Let's go. We packed the show full of guests today. Footy players galore. Yeah, we had Josh Kennedy, uh, the retiree. God, he's a champion for the Eagles. Plus Jeremy McGovern. Uh, and Hudson. That's yeah, Hudson did. McGovern as yep, well. Yep, and yep. Griffin Logue too. Uh, Adam Hills. We talked to him about the return of Spicks and Specs. And we caught up with Manu as well uh, with My Kitchen Rules starring Nigella Lawson coming soon. We also talked about if you uh, heard a young person or an old person. <laughs> yes, and talking about old people, we were nothing but age shamed during the Harry's debrief. Um, it was true. actually disgusting. It's an outrage. And Harry's being fired. Harry, did you know that? You're being fired. No. Oh, it would be good to sleep in. It would be good. Oh, yeah. It would be good. If you could get us fired too, that would be great. He's taking no it pretty hard. No <laughs> this is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Spix and Specs returns to the ABC. We're excited about that. It's like a hug from an old friend, Spix and Specs. Um, and the host with the most is Adam Hills who joins us now. Hillsy, how are you? Yeah, I am fine, thank you. And you? Yeah, how are you yeah. Doing well. Yeah, you're, Elf, you're, uh, each of you, tell me individually how you're doing. <laughs> we're just we're just in the mine, mate, waiting mm. for the, see if the canary dies. That's, That's right. <laughs> At the coal face. We're just in here digging. <laughs> just in here digging with no thanks. How's the UK? <laughs> oh, listen. Uh, it's sunny and Australia are winning gold medals at yeah. the Commonwealth Games. Thank I couldn't you. be happier. Yeah, are you getting a part of it? Are you, do you feel the buzz around? I mean, obviously it's in Birmingham, but um, yeah, yeah. How's, what's the feeling like? Yeah, you did a thing at the Australia House the other night, didn't you? I did. I was at Australia House on Tuesday night. I was hosting a, an official kind of almost handover function for the Victoria um, Victorian Commonwealth Games in four years' time. And I opened it by saying... Welcome, everybody, to the Australia's Beating England in the Medal Tally party. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. You, you knew your crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I finished it by saying and to all the English people in the room, can I just say, suck it? <laughs> and then went, oh, and here's the High Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Adam, uh, when I went to Australia House uh, a couple of times uh, when I was in the UK, every time they serve party pies and um, Fosters. Now, yep. no one drinks Fosters, obviously, in Australia. When you had the opening the other day, <laughs> when you, the crossover, what did, what was the food that they got out there to the people? There's often party pies, but it was definitely craft beer this time. Oh, mm, or well, they've uh, upped their game. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Yeah, they'll go for some really regional produce now. Um, <laughs> How artisanal. <laughs> and when you, when you were there, did they point out or did you realise you were also standing in Gringotts Bank from Harry Potter? Oh, no, were you? No. Gringotts was yeah. filmed. The bank scenes yeah. were filmed in Australia House in London. Wow. Oh. No, I didn't know what that. What an interesting little fact. <laughs> I might have been there before Harry Potter started. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's so right. a fair while ago there. Hey, on your Instagram, you give a shout out to yeah. um, your brother who was part of the Stranger Things ex- the experience. He created that. Is that right? There's a big Stranger Things interactive experience that's been running in New York for about three months and they're, ju- they're just about to start it up in London and my brother's one of the actors that's been playing in it and so they've flown him over to London to help them set it up. So, yeah, I'm, I've been hanging out with my brother over here at the moment. It's been great. Oh, so what, cool. is, what does the experience entail? What happens? Well, you basically walk into an enormous warehouse and for 45 minutes you're inside Stranger Things. You I go see you're into in the upside rooms. down. Is that right? You're in the upside down and my, my brother is one of the laboratory um, investigators that kind of takes you through some of the strange phenomenon. <laughs> well, there I you go. Out. No. You know what's amazing about you, Adam, is that you have spent a lot of time in the UK. There is not a hint of a UK accent and yet we know people that have been to London for three oh. weeks and come back talking like a geezer. He can do that though. He'll see you've got the best accent though. You can pull it off any day. Well, that's the thing. So my manager, I've got a manager over here who's who's Cockney. And if I talk to him for half an hour, like literally every conversation I'll have afterwards is, all right, geese, how's it going? Yeah, what, what, yeah. A little bit of apples and pears. Why don't we go down the old fruit market? You know what I'm saying? And occasionally... Occasionally when I get back to Australia, I find myself uh, drinking from a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> a bottle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, we should speak about Spicks and Specs. Yes. Um, the thing about it is I'd love to be on that panel, Adam, but I, I, like, and we, we present music as a living here. Yes. But we're mm-hmm. too stupid <laughs> to be able to get some of these songs. Well, we don't retain anything. No, we? no, but Sean, some of the songs are so like it's just like you you need to know music. Yeah, you and do. A lot of your guests that you have on there, I would never even think would have that much depth of musical knowledge, but yet they 
snag some answers. <laughs> How is this possible? Well, Jimmy Barnes is the perfect example of yes. that. Like you, you, for a number of reasons, you don't think he's going to remember anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yet his music knowledge was amazing. Yeah. So would Jimmy be one of the smartest? Who's one of the stupidest you've ever had on? <laughs> <laughs> oh look, I I wouldn't say that Hamish Blake is stupid. <laughs> it's just not his strength. It's, it's just music isn't his strong point. <laughs> <laughs> but he's entertaining, so you know. Oh, he's he very smart in other ways. <laughs> in yeah. his own way, yes, he's smart. that's right. And how would you go if you were a contestant? You you, you seem to oh, know you everything. Have to, yeah. You seem to know everything, but yeah, but he's got it written down. I know, but if you were <laughs> playing, if you were playing. Yeah. Would you be okay? No, I, I used to get invited to music quiz nights because yes. people just thought I knew all the answers. Yes. And then it became very clear early on in those quiz nights that I didn't. I'm the same. I'm pretty good. At, I'm pretty handy at a quiz night. It comes to the music round and I'm like, I don't know. Everyone's like, you work in radio. No, no, that's it doesn't, People it doesn't help. People look you and think you're going to know everything It doesn't help. That. I think when you work in it all day long, you've got so many songs coming mm. in and out and so many facts going in and out of your brain, you can't hold on to them. They just kind yeah, of disappear. Yeah, that's my excuse. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Adam. We work in commercial radio. We have the same six songs Yes, it's Ed Sheeran or Dua That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we need to do? We need to go to a trivia night where it just plays ad jingles. Oh, like, oh, the yeah. ads we retain. Oh, yes. The grout guy is your man. The grout guy. guy. The grout guy. The grout guy. <laughs> the grout guy. <laughs> the grout guy. <laughs> if you need any if you need any grouting <laughs> done. <laughs> oh, anyway, just made some Do you know what? That. I'm going to tell you something right now. Okay. Yes. For, for two reasons. Gabby Bolt was on the show, the comedian Gabby Bolt. Yep. And uh, I think it was Gabby who said that her her field of expert, musical expertise was like North Coast, New South Wales ad jingles from yeah. the 90s. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yes. Um, We're kindred spirits. And we couldn't, think of any to, we couldn't think of any to throw at her. But also the way she got on the show was she tweeted me saying, I'm so desperate to be on Spicks and Specs, I will sing Substitute using the words of your autobiography if I have to, <gasps> then filmed herself doing it, and wow. then I was too scared not to bring her on Spicks and Specs. Amazing. Because oh, yeah. yeah. the next step is her living in his ceiling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to give stalkers a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit, to keep your family alive. <laughs> I get it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Well, we can't wait to watch the next series. Adam Hills, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Keep give, sticking it to those palms over the Common Games. Good on you, Adam. By the you way. know what? I've done a lot of interviews today and this one's been my favourite. Oh, you say uh, that to everybody. Uh, <laughs> cut and paste. Cut <laughs> Thank you yeah, so man. much, Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Love your work, Hilsey. Thanks, mate. Bye, Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Whether you've been craving the ocean, snow, mountains or city lights, there are so many possibilities for you and your next trip. Yeah, make up for missed holidays and explore more of Oz with whatif.com. Jump online or on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. Nick Curious has um, actually gotten some fans over in Washington. Nice, yeah, playing Washington. The, playing yep. the City Open on uh, yesterday. Yeah, and, um, Wimbledon finalist. He was taking on America's Tommy Paul in the tournament uh, when his uh, return serve bounced over the petition and it struck what I can only describe as the oldest woman in the world's head. <laughs> <laughs> and sh- she is, and this is how old she is. Oh, She's an old lady. She's like, imagine age, then double it. <laughs> <laughs> and um and so can I so, look at that again? Yeah, she's <laughs> she's oh, <geez. laughs> no, she's she's lived a life. She's, she's a so life. very old. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> the oldest person you've ever met. She's lived a life, and it looks like she's run all the way. <laughs> she has, Sean. Um, anyway, so then the cameras cut to her, and she's in the crowd, and she's holding her head. Because I'm surprised it didn't cave it in. Yes. The and, and, because and bones aren't too strong. He hits it pretty no, hard. No. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. So she's holding her head and then he's um, won everybody over because he's walked over and he's giving her, given her his training towel. Mm. And she, she, I mean, she's so old, I don't even think she knows where she is. And then when he hands her the towel, she just turns to the person she's with and goes, what's this for? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even she get, wasn't bleeding or anything. She doesn't get the gesture. No. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, wait a minute, is this my lounge room? <laughs> Why is the TV so loud? <laughs> 
why does he think he can fix this Turn with that? Off. Get these people out of my lounge room. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad so she's good. okay. But you know what? I, I do agree. I mean, not that she knew what was going on, but, you know, how's that going to soothe her head yes. by just passing a this towel over? This is the over? worst thing out, on, of every, out, of washing. <laughs> out of everybody in the crowd. Why the oldest, oldest woman person. that's on the planet? I know. Why did the ball go Everybody there? else got out the way. <laughs> it's so bad. Can I say, I didn't see the reaction of the rest of the crowd, but... How would you be if you were standing near that? How would your reaction oh, be? Oh, I would have lost it laughing. <laughs> I'm so bad. It's so very bad when someone gets hurt. And it doesn't matter who they are or what terrible position they're in. And they're the oldest person. Remember I told you that time that I was at that birthday party and um, my friend's grandmother, who was as old as this woman, she misstepped. They were up there doing a speech for her one millionth birthday. And she took a step and she fell down this step. And then when she got up, she was just trying to catch her heart, you know. But what she did was she just grabbed her boob and she kept on squeezing it. And I It made her feel a lot better. I could not stop (laughs) laughing. But I do feel bad because I once have I've um, done something terrible to an old person. That was my nana Marjorie in Kalgoorlie mm, mm. when I was bringing her a cup of tea with one of those old lady cups, we you know, with a curvy handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and my thumb was um, on the on the base of the cup, uh, on the side of the cup, and it was getting. I'm oh, sorry, my index finger was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And as I got to nana, I went, "Nana, your tea, nana, your tea, nana, your tea." And I threw it at her, and nana was just covered in boiling hot tea, and oh. it went through all of her skin crevices. <laughs> But your finger was all right, right? Yeah, it was. And oh, it hit, well, thank and goodness. It hit, and it hit a wall, and her walls were metal. <laughs> did she? Did she <laughs> we had, they had tin walls. Her house was so mm-hmm. old, they had tin walls, and it just hit the tin wall, and it smashed. And So afterwards, did she apologise to you? <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're talking about when you've... You're a great person, but accidentally <laughs> you may have done something to a very old person or a very young person. Yeah, yeah. Nat, you hit a, a young person with a baseball bat once. Uh, it was a softball bat and she walked into it and but from behind and she shouldn't have been where she was. But, yes, all. I did whack her very hard at the you, you said, but she was asking for <laughs> it. Um, Amy's in Forestfield. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you going? Good, good Amy. Amy. What did you do? That's good. Um, so when I lived in Queensland, um, I was about 12 years old and I've always been really bad at riding a bicycle. And I told my friends that and they peer pressured me into getting on the bike anyway. Mm. Um, I knew something bad was going to happen, but um, I'm riding on the footpath at the front of the shop and um, I lost control of the bike and slid off the gutter into a brand new, freshly cleaned Mercedes um, that a probably 80 year old man had just cleaned um he literally had the rag in his hand for polishing his own car (laughs) and it was absolutely awful and i felt so bad but Mm. nothing happened he just got really mad at me and i said to my friends i told you i was bad at this and Mm. he just laughed you were right you were right horrible to be honest and that that is that is terrible but like when you chuck the Mercedes in yeah. there, I don't feel as bad for him. Well, yeah. I think the other no, thing too, Nate, I know. The, the thing with that as well, it's not like he's got anything else to do, so that can take up the <laughs> next day, you know what I mean? Oh, my <laughs> God. And also, it gives him something to complain about to all of his grandchildren. You've done him a favour, yeah. Amy. Yeah, actually. No, yep. what you did was yep. a good thing. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Cheryl's in Byford. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. What did you do? Well, it was, um, I was about 16 and we all went to the bed to work, we having a great time. And we all said, let's have a race, we'll get onto the Bounties Revenge. So we were turning full stilt to the Bounties Revenge to get on it. And this little kid, about probably about four years old, starts wandering in front of me. And I thought, I've got this, I can it. Well, I couldn't. And absolutely KO this kid. His mum comes running over and he was in a panic. I'm in a panic because I thought I'd killed a child. Oh. And we were all just standing there just waiting for this little kid to get up. And he got up, he was screaming, but it was absolutely mortifying. When yeah. you take out a kid, you yeah. know. Oh, about his revenge. Yeah. Do you know why? Because then there's the parents. It's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Having to deal with the parents, like they stood there and watched this kid just get. Mate, the that's why you get yeah. back on the bounty and you set the sail. Exactly. <laughs> 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 that's right. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Nathan, Dad and Sean. My Kitchen Rules is back this Sunday on Channel 7. And, of course, Manu Feldel returns. Good morning, Manu. Bonjour, bonjour. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. 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 Uh, very surprising to see that um, Pete Evans has transitioned into an English woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigella joins you, as yes. uh, Nathan was referring to, a Manu. I mean, yes, well, yes. you were definitely the sex appeal in everyone's mind. Yes. Well, definitely for me, Well, I not just that. Manu was the one that everyone would get really excited about. You know what I mean? Yes. Because yes. the Australian, but then it's, oh, there's Franchi Manu. He's so sexy. Manu, are you playing second fiddle to Nigella with the contestants this yes. year? Oh. I thought I, I, thought I I said I was employed to run the show this year, but no, I'm just there to uh, carry uh, Nigel Lawson's luggage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my no. Oh, well, it was a good one. No, it's, it's, it's a bit sad, isn't it? Like yeah. I said, I was going to yeah. do a big star and that. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So well, for me. You know, you've been to WA. We're starved for celebrities over here. <laughs> Whenever you need a little pick me up, just fly <laughs> yes. over here. Okay, and, darling. <laughs> in fact, when you were here, because, so you filmed in Albany, so there's a team from Albany, is that right? Yes, 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 and uh, I, you know, I didn't know, uh, you know, I've never been there, and I went there, and it's absolutely gorgeous down there. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, well, during the news the other day, a bloke stole two thousand dollars worth of sex toys. Yes, um, and then ran, ran. It's a picture Manu, of you, weirdly, then um. resold them. <laughs> so there were people in Albany that are buying stolen sex toys. That's where you went. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, I was the guy who stole them in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't drink stirrers at the table. <laughs> What's your handle on? Not a swizzle stick. <laughs> yeah, you got to get your handle on Gumtree for that one, uh, Manu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Manu, um, what's different about this year's that we can look forward to? Well, we, we got rid of the drama to start with, so that's that's a, a plus for us. Okay, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got, obviously, Najila joining, uh, joining us. We've also got... Uh, a couple of more uh, kids on the block coming. So we've got Colin Fastnage, uh, Curly Stone, and also the Mr. Matt Preston. So oh. we have uh, we've got a lot of fun, and um, yeah, we're just going around the country again uh, with twelve teams and eating a lot of food. Manu, when you're casting for this season, did you just go to the um, a celebrity chef unemployment line <laughs> and just <laughs> <laughs> load them all into the van? <laughs> Yes, yes, we do, but don't tell anyone about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, when you go around to these people's houses, right? Yes. Because I know when I've got guests coming over, I am cleaning the inside of drawers and everything. Have you ever gone around there and they've you stumbled into a really dirty room or there's skitties on their toilet bowl? Like, <laughs> how clean the are they? Is, the answer is yes, it happened. <laughs> There, there is always, there's going to be a, a room, too, where they've shoved everything, <laughs> so knowing yeah, that the camera isn't going to go in there. But that's where you want to look, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, you're right. I scratched my head going, wouldn't you want to actually, you know, make sure that it's all, you know... Perfect. Uh, clean and uh, perfect before you invite a whole crew in your house. Mm, mm. But anyway... But it's like yeah. those, if, you, if you go onto realestate.com, right, yep, yep. Uh, .au, yes. and, and, you, and you look at, like, people that are trying to sell their houses and the people that haven't got the, um, uh, haven't got the professional photographers in there, some of them l- look like an absolute pigsty. <laughs> you can't even see the floor. It's like, <laughs> clean it up! Clutter, declutter. Yeah. Move it. And leaving some strength. French toys on the yes, bedside that they bought in an alley there. in Albany. Yeah, we yeah, get yeah, it. that doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manu, we, we can't wait to see you back on our screens again. Um, yep. we yeah, we appreciate it, your time because we know you're busy in doing back to back interviews no, this morning. I'm, I'm always happy to uh, talk to you guys. Oh, listen to you, um, Manu and his new friend Nigella um, on My Kitchen Rules this Sunday on Channel Seven from seven pm. Thank you. Merci. Merci à vous. <laughs> See you, buddy. You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Oh, this is really nice, isn't it, guys? This is Shady Palm's retirement village. Mm. It's actually... The beige walls are a nice touch. Very nice, I think. I think the residents look happy. <laughs> we need to run that by Josh Kennedy because he's retiring. He might need to go to well, retirement let's home. Let's show him around. Hello, JK. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> Great joke, eh? What do you think? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds absolutely beautiful. Look at that. There's water aerobics. Oh, we? There seems to be a vibrant community here. They've oh. got a lawn bowls rink. Mmm. Beautiful. Oh, that sounds great. Is yeah. there a got the cup of tea as well? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Tea. yeah. Love yeah. a cup of tea, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Love a cup of tea. Love a cup of tea. <laughs> they get, they're getting their tea from tea too here. This is actually... <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey quick level. question, JK. What time do you eat dinner? Uh, it oh, depends on the kids, but yeah, usually like 5, 5.30. Yeah, 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 we're mm. all pensioners then. Yeah. We're all Not the same me. boat here. 7.30, yeah. like a young person. Oh, and that's a <laughs> night owl. <laughs>
<laughs> now, JK, it's been a massive week for you, obviously announcing yeah. your retirement, um, and then all the reflections from people about your career. It's been get, lovely. And, Everyone's got yeah. nice things to say, which is good. They have, but also for you personally, you know, because you have to front cameras and people are asking you to kind of reflect and describe your f- early days. How's that been for you? Yeah, it's. Um, I suppose you, when you get asked the questions, it kind of starts rolling through on, on uh, how it started and where it's been and I suppose memories that pop up in your head and yeah, sometimes it's hard to remember everything but yeah, it's brought back, um, I suppose a lot of times back when I first started playing footy and when you start comparing to um, the way it is now, it's... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a been a crazy journey, that's for sure. I will tell you right now, um, and I'll defend you to the death, um, because I feel like people should not do this to others, because I'm on the other side of it, as with Natalie. You don't have a pinhead. I don't care what people say. <laughs> Thank you. you know, I do not think. Because we're big-headed people. It's on radio now. It's, it's on record. record. I think that your head, and I've seen your head in real life on many mm. occasions, I think your head is a nice, healthy size and weight. And in proportion to the rest look, of your body. Also, JK, I did my own research the other day and have seen a beardless, a stubbled and a bearded JK, and I have to say every version is amazing. The beard isn't hiding anything, which is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's great, it's great that finally someone's got some comments. <laughs> All right, so on that, though, will yes. you go back to any of the things that Nathan mentioned, the, the, the bidless, Josh Kennedy, yeah. the stubble? That's not stubble, yeah. the stubbled. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, I was obviously seeing some photos pop up and, um, yeah, you kind of got to reflect on the time where it was, it was clean shaven and then, yeah, it was the time I started growing a beard was I, I had shoulder surgery mm. and I wasn't able to um, kind of shave for a good couple of months and that was leading in the back end of, I think, 08, my first year at West Coast and, I met my um, I met my wife, um, yeah, Lauren, and she um, she loved the beard, and that's how it kind of ended up staying. When I was able to back, I think I shaved it for the first time when yeah. I could when my shoulder came out of sling, and yep. um, and she said I, I don't really like that, so it's pretty much stuck. <laughs> <in there. laughs> well, not just that. I mean, like you know, we know him as Josh, and and mm. a lot of people know JK. They may know know that J stands for Josh, and then when they see Jim's mowing, they mm. probably look at that and go, "Well, <laughs> well he's there doing he is. Well for that's himself. the guy. <laughs> that's, that's Jim Kennedy." He's doing well. Not bad. That's probably the only business he I, hasn't bought over the journey, too, I want to talk about, um, and I saw that um, Nick Nat um, brought it up um, last night, that you don't ever touch the banner because it's a superstition. <laughs> so that's, I mean, I get superstitions. Do, do you carry superstitions throughout your whole life? Like, Do you have any others that you live by? Um, no, nah, not really. It's more just the, the stuff on game day, I think. Um, yeah, I think you just get, I get caught in, you get caught in routines that, you know, you, you kind of uh, figure out over the course of your career and, and then you get fixated on them and then it becomes a thing. But like, I, I, there's plenty of times where the banner did touch me and I didn't freak yeah. out. Yeah. Still, so okay, is so that like, why West Coast got rid of the banner on, at home games and just have the inflatable <laughs> eagle tunnel? It Was that because of no, you? No, uh, don't. The cheer squad will get very angry with me about that. No, that's not the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> the big birds there. But, um, look, I, yeah, I tried to actually get um, a, a banner made up um, and I probably was going to run through it for the one and only time. But um, but we actually couldn't get the supplies into... Um, into WA. There's so. no great paper. I'm sorry, it'd be so funny if he, if he decided <laughs> yeah. one day to run through the banner and he got paper cut to shreds. <laughs> 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 Had to come off continuously game. with the blood yeah. rule. <laughs> or he got clotheslined by some heavy tape. <laughs> We've seen it happen. Yeah, it does happen. <laughs> hey, JK, everyone's talking about the fads too that you get involved in. We had Jeremy McGovern. Yeah. He mentioned it. Obviously, Nick Nat mentioned on the news last night on 7. So give, give us a rundown of some of them. Of the things you've tried. No, it's not bad. It's come just, on, mate. It's, 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 Mate, you, there's a lot of stuff out in the world that people say, hey, you should do this, you should do that. Mm. And there's like research, there's facts, there's social media facts which aren't true and all these things. So you have, you have no idea what's true these days. I, I, it can't, it's too hard to pick through it all. But yeah. when people say, oh, look, you know, if you go vegetarian, you'll be a better athlete. Or if you, yeah. you know, get off the drink for a year, which is, is that is actually fact. If you don't drink for a yeah. year, you Okay, you've proven button. that one. Yeah. But, but then when it was, remember, remember that sugar documentary um, yes. that we all, all yes. watch? I mean, when I watched that, I, I stopped eating so much sauce because yeah. I didn't realise how much sauce was in the sugar, sugar yeah. thing and I yeah. stopped putting sugar in yeah. my tea. And and um, JK, of course, being you know super young, even though he's retiring, would be all over TikTok, so I'm sure he's done the Tide Pods <laughs> and all those other things. Um, yeah, all, yeah, all the, di- all all the dances. So as long as it's <laughs> suggested by someone else, you'll give it a crack? No, well, it's just I'm being open to it, so I'd like, you know... Yeah. 
I would only know until you try it. So, sure yeah, it so it's pretty much been it. So I've had a, had a year, a year or months doing that. Blah, 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 you blah. know, there was actually one stage which was funny. Like, Lekka laughs at me with this one, but um, I kind of, uh, someone's saying that the, to get hydrated a lot quicker, you, your body um, needs room temperature, well, you, the temperature of what's in your gut with the water. So, yes. warm water. So, yeah. obviously, so there was a time where I was at training, I was just getting the tap water rather than having it cold. Um, oh, and obviously the benefits of having cold water brings you in, in your temperature <laughs> down, which is good for you, but I'm going to get hydrated more. So, so you're hydrated, but you still had hypothermia. <laughs> I, think that, I think they're big on that in China, aren't they? That's room temperature water all the time. Yeah, yeah. So there's all that. So I just, I'd, you give it a go for a few months and see if you feel any better. If you don't, you move on. But out of all the things, you kind of, you realise what's good and what doesn't work. And I've just kind of been able to minimise and, and balance it out over a, a normal lifestyle. Pickle well, juice? Yeah. Did you get on the pickle juice? I didn't. That's one thing I did try. Oh. I'm not like Yoey Yoey's pickle juice, and that, that's the worst thing. You know, we had to put a big label of number six on his water bottle because you'd come to the bench and you'd grab this thing and you'd put it down your mouth and you'd throw up everywhere. <laughs> if you're not oh. expecting it's pickle juice, it's not a good surprise. I tell you what, Sean walks around this building offering everyone his pickle juice. <laughs> and one no takers, weirdly. Said yes. No right. takers. Yeah, it's one of those things, though. The more you ask, this will be <laughs> It's a numbers game, Sean. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's how I work. Hey, JK, now let me, let's reflect on all the messages and yeah. um, the people have, uh, you, you know, called you or said stuff out in the media of um, what a great West Coast Eagles player, but what a what a champion bloke you've been around the football club and, and in life. It must be um, very humbling hearing stuff, some of this stuff. Yeah, no, Tom, it's, I've, I've been yeah, so grateful um, for a lot of kind words that have, have come my way um, this week and, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's been quite overwhelming, uh, really. But um, but uh, yeah, to listen to your teammates and to listen to you know people in the footy community and just the fans and um, you know the, one of the things that's really hit me as well is opposition fans. So um, yep. the last few weeks playing and playing you know um, in Melbourne or playing away games and um, just having you know other you know, opposition fans come up and um, kind of congratulate you on your career and um, so they've loved watching you play. Is, you know, the little kids that run around in, you know, a, a St Kilda shirt or a Hawthorne mm-hmm. shirt or a Fremantle Dockers um, shirt, but they come up and um, they say they've enjoyed watching you play. It's really, um, really quite, um, I don't know, it's amazing and, and I'm very grateful for that. Is so. it the closest that you would think it would be to, to being at your own funeral? <laughs> That's a good point, I reckon. Do you reckon it's the closest it would be to being attending your own funeral? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A little bit. All right. there's, been, there's been a lot. There's been a lot of words, and you know, thank you. And yeah. I've kind of had to sit down and go, "Oh yeah, I'm not dying yet. I'm still gonna Monday morning. I'm still gonna be here." So <laughs> yeah, that's my <laughs> day. Yeah. What's future Josh gonna do? Do you have a skill set that you're gonna expand on, or what do you want to do? Um, no, nah, look, we'll probably. Um, oh, I've got a labour hire business, which is um, I kind of run overseas, which is in the metro area here. And but look, we're. As a family, we're probably looking to move up um, to the Midwest, back up to Jordan, and get yeah, closer right. um, to our family and stuff. And a bit of a passion project I've got going and got up and running. Um, we got through all the registration stuff now. Is um, the Josh Kennedy Foundation, which will yeah. um, JK Foundation, which will be um, which will be helping disadvantaged youth in, in regional areas. Help uh, one kind of facilitate and try and find what they want to aspire to, um, and yeah. then also building an environment around that helps with resources to, um, to to create a pathway for them. Oh, um, without the restrictions of um, your know, location. My, my biggest thing is I, I feel, and yes. this is just purely facts, is the city kids just do get a lot more yeah. resources and a lot more access to things to um, build a career that they want to do. Yeah, and it's the limited opportunities. Yeah. I do really, say, as a regional kid, I know what you're saying. Yeah, when I was in Kalgoorlie, doing anything, say, in the media, like what I'm doing now, it wasn't even on the radar. You couldn't even understand how yeah. that would be a possibility. Mm. You just yeah. don't have yeah. the resources. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So being able to help bridge that gap is purely what the foundation is going to be about. So if we are starting in the Midwest, I'd love to pick it up and drop it everywhere in WA, but um, we'll start. Jeez, could you be any better of a bloke, to I be know. honest? Is it possible? <laughs> Maybe your head was a tiny bit bigger. But other than that, that's right. it. <laughs> hey, head is normal size. <laughs> JK, before we let you go, I just wanted to ask you, because people keep asking me, um, it was a talk around my dinner table last night, um, my brothers and um, old boy, was about why aren't you playing the derby? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. The, um, we we kind of came with a plan um, towards mid-season by um, pushing this back end of the year and um, uh, we're um and an art about um, playing one last game at Optus and um, I, I kind of sat down and I, was, I think it was just really important to 
I suppose, play last game in front of home fans. Mm. Um, and and then also, I didn't actually know how far I was. I didn't think I would get this far. Um, there's, there's a lot of occasions through this back end of the year where there was, you know, conversations with Simo going, no, I'm actually done this week. I don't think I'll be able to get up. So yeah, right. um, I actually didn't think I'd make it this far. And, and um, the St Kilda game, we kind of pushed a bit through and uh, got through that. And then I've had the week off. And, yeah, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, not having that feeling of trying to um, get up. Um, for a game, um, even though I'm going to miss it so much, but yeah, we've um, we landed on the Adelaide game, and, and this will be it. All right, and hope about. it goes up, goes yeah. off with a bang, JK. Everybody, that was Kick a lazy the very normal size <laughs> headed <laughs> Josh Kennedy. <laughs> Good on you, JK. Love your work, JK. You, Thanks, buddy. Bye, bye. Appreciate it, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. It's actually a really good time to catch up with our West Coast Eagle, Jeremy McGovern. Obviously, later on, we're going to speak about JK. uh, Speak to JK. We're going to speak to him. But um, (laughs) the back page of the paper, which you just flipped over, right? And look shocked at. They've taken umbrage of having a go at uh, fitness levels down at the West Coast Eagles. Kane Corns is a person in the AFL circles in um, uh, the journalistic game that likes to um, have a pot at pretty much everyone. You've got to run in it, too. Yeah, cheers, Kane. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. what have he said about golf? Well, well he um, starts uh, off talking about you don't have to read it, but he, he talks about um, the West Coast Eagles need to put a thing in contracts to, and the AFL should look at it for guys to be fit, uh, fitter, to be able to come back and uh, make sure the skin folds and weight are at the level. So he's pinpointing Nick Natanui. He so, mentions the golf uh, look, at some I, stage. Have we moved on from this sort of mm. scrutiny? Because I know that you know being in peak performance physically. Like, uh, you know, your fitness is one thing. But if this was about women, would this fly? No No. way. Of course it wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, also, yeah. what, like well, that's a tall, rangy guy. He's a tall oh, drink of look. water. We, we <laughs> have Harry in here all the time. He, and I, I'm an easy target. I understand. I probably don't look like. Uh, but yeah, Harry's a Michelin man. Rich, what are you rich, talking about? Rich footballers. But um, if Kane actually did his research, last three years I've been as fit. Skinny. Yes, there's nothing of you. Ever been in my life? Yeah, I have been injured. He's right. I have been injured. I don't think it's got anything to do with my weight. I was six kilos heavier and winning all Australian. So yeah, I, he wasn't calling me out then. So no, it's no, just no. A bit, a bit random. Um, you know, he's trying. I, I understand why he's doing. it. He's got to do it. And, I, and what he's talking about is is probably fair enough because elite athletes we need to stay to a standard. I, I, I understand that, but I don't think he needs to be throwing names. Yeah, around. I, I feel like. Just do your story. Yeah. What, it's out, a, it's of, a, out of everyone it's in the whole blow. AFL, he's yeah. three West Coast Can players. I just yeah, say, the, f- the first time you ever walked into this studio, right, I, I was shocked and I said to these guys afterwards, you are way taller than what I thought you were going to be and you are so slim. Yeah, well, it's so I don't get where yeah. Yeah. it's coming it's just, from. It's just the camera that does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know the feeling. I mean, you're carrying an extra 20 kilos today because yeah. you've brought in Junior. Yeah, Lil Hudson's, Hudson's here today. He's, he's just slowly warming up. Yeah. He's, uh, he wants to do radio when he's older, he told me. Sure, oh, sure. It's so cute to see him in here. And uh, how he is he with the great. footy in his hands? I mean, I he's know it's too early. Off. I don't want to put any pressure on him, but no, father, he's, son. He's good. I've, no no <laughs> pressure with skin folds or anything in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he's, he's just trying to enjoy his footy as much as he can when he has yeah. a kick. You know, yeah. Gov, years ago, um, Paul Hazelby, uh, Matthew Pavlich and Lee Brown were on the back page of the paper. and they For just, the same reason. Yeah, so they just they, wheel they, it out. Had, but they had a really big story about how unfit and... Um, Why don't we do it about journalists? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Robert Walls was the one who was penning the article there. Yeah, and, there you go. But but so the women's AFLW have made sure that the clubs can't go down this track in in terms of uh, you know weight and also skin folds and stuff like that. And they would never have this on the back page of paper. And I think the West Australia need to lift their socks and stop targeting these guys. Yeah, well, we're talking about it, aren't we? So yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what they're oh, after. And, um, no, 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 we've fallen we're into part the, the trap. The problem. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway, it, it is what it is. Like this, is just part of. Yeah. Being an elite, elite footballer and, and things we've got to deal with. So, um, oh, it's, it's a bit disappointing when yeah. JK's, I know that he's had a lot of coverage, but we're two days away from, you know, the the, uh, the club's greatest goal kicker retiring and that that's on the back page. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they've royally stuffed that one up, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the West Australian. They can uh, they can post what they want. I have got no control over, unfortunately. They weigh us before we walk into the studio <laughs> when we leave the studio, but that's just to see if we're taking any of the prize money. <laughs> so <laughs> very good day. Um, it is going to be a big game for JK this week in the team. You must be filthy that you can run out oh, there. They, they, these yeah. are games that mean something to players massively. Yeah, uh, he told me a few weeks ago, um, yeah. and obviously when he told me, I was. 
knuckle down. I've got to, I've got to try and get up and play. Yeah. Um, and then when I, when I realised I had no chance of of actually getting up, it was pretty flattening. But um, yeah, these are definitely the ones you want to get out there and play play for and, and play. Obviously, play the last game with him, but um, I'll be have to have to be watching from the sidelines, unfortunately. But um, yeah, he's been an absolute champion for us. Obviously, the the coverage of it over the last couple of days has been massive for him, and so it should be. But um, yeah, he's going to be sorely missed, big time. Um, hard man to replace. Not just the football, obviously the accolades and all that that yeah. speak for themselves. But he's an absolute ripping bloke. I, I wouldn't know anyone who said a bad word about him. What happens with like? So say you know JK is going to be out. Like, do, are there people circling around his locker? Is it in a good location? Mm, like, or, yeah. or what his what number? Happens? What yeah. happens, <laughs> what happens oh, when I'm someone sh- goes? Oh, when they go, oh, you know what? I, with, I wouldn't be surprised if his number wasn't worn again next year. We did that Pritta. I think Pritta was probably the last one that we had where they not retired it but just gave the, the gave it a break. year off. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with JKs. I'm sure there's some boys on his number off, but um, he's only he's a couple down from me. In the locker room, yeah, of course, 20, yeah. So. yeah. But Nathan, um, you, are you, you in good real estate? Like, who are your neighbours? Your locker neighbours? No, oh, um, the boys. I got young, young Chester, Campbell Chester. That'd be yep. good. And I pitched Chelly the other side of me. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I oh, I love my area. My area is great. <laughs> I think um, the governor's around Trafalgar Square type situation. Do, you right. so, do so, not go to jail. Yeah, <laughs> pr- probably in the red section. He's definitely not Mayfair. No, he's definitely no, not no, Mayfair. No, I'm not, no. Well, no, I'm not Mayfair. No, well, no. I mean, he's not. And uh, Park Lane, spacious. obviously. Yeah, but who yeah. wants to really be there? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. right. It'll be middle yeah. of the road, don't you? Um, yeah. Do you um, decorate your locker like you do, or the girls do at high school? Do you have like, um, like you know, like nah, Hudson dream and Glitter with a nice photo of him? I've got there. nothing. Oh, actually, all I've got is a Dean Cox playing card in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but all he I've got left there. there. Yeah, Coxie left it there, so I said, never forget it, mate. This is my locker. Uh, but no, no, I don't have much decoration in there. No, they're all new, pretty Just new some fairy lockers. lights. And, yeah. Yeah. Does anyone decorate their lockers? Uh, I don't know. No, no not really. I don't a few, think few it's photos a... here and there, Sean, not too much. did you no. ever have anything in your locker? No, no, a fair no, few just, boys just decorate it with dirty... Mouldy towels. Yeah, sure. Mouldy towels, dirty <laughs> boots and everything else. <laughs> yes. That's decoration. They used to make us have a clean out all the time because every now and then they get in a uh, some kind of uh, bacteria specialist and they you know do a swab of your locker and yeah, they that's tear that's... us apart of how <laughs> hygienic we are. And Monkey how, pox. You know, people can get sick and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, well, I suppose that would be the indication of the first gay AFL player, wouldn't it? Yeah, going over and it would smell amazing. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be those um, fairy lights, uh, the battery-operated fairy lights from Garlands of Flowers from Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. Um, Gar, with your training at the moment, are, are you expected to be at the club yep. fulfilling your duties to the end of the year? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm back running, getting going now, so I'll, I'll just keep building my fitness and try to lose a bit of weight by the looks of this. Um, <laughs> Oh. And then, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll just get myself cherry ripe for the off-season, have a good off-season and pre-season and get ready to go. How do you feel about our Sunday's game as the last home game for the year? And there's expectations that you win for JK. Do the do you think the players could get over the top with maybe this or they would just no, they'd be I, able to lift for the occasion and I'm, keep it as the occasion? Yeah, I'm hoping that they, they lift for the occasion. And I, th- and I think they will. The boys are... Um, Obviously, love JK. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to lift. Um, but the boys train really well. So um, and we've we've played some good footy the last few weeks. Uh, yeah. We, we had an opportunity to knock Gold Coast off, and we didn't. But um, Adelaide are a good side as well. So hopefully, the boys can can get it done. I hope we're up by a couple of goals late, so we can. Now everybody loves JK. JK, as you've been saying. But is there anything bad about him? Like, is does he have any bad habits? Because we got him. Oh. We got him. Any, we need any, him any negative at all? His head is super small, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It is small. He, he can't wear normal size hats. He wears good size hats. Uh, I'd that's why he has a big head than a big, big head. head yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm a big yeah. head person. Yeah, um, me too. No, nah, no. Nah, there's nothing. No, nah, nothing. I can. I, he, He's just perfect the only thing in every I way. I always do give him a bit of flack about is uh, he when I've he went through the stage of going through fads. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. He went through everything. Like if you ask him, he will tell you a couple, but. Yeah, times it by five. So we're talking about the like the no sugar situation. Yeah, he, he would oh, have okay. done that. He would have done um, vegan. He would have done. So he he would have done all the like the cabbage diets. He would he, all that he, sort of he stuff. went through a phase of just trying everything, and it, it wasn't, <laughs> lemon it wasn't for no other reason except for trying it because JK's just like he would just try try stuff and see if it works. Just give it a crack. God, but yeah, been, he went it, through he went through all these phases. Yeah, was phase, he into so. planking, keto, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> finger spinners? <laughs> yeah. Can I just talk about yo, yo, quickly yo, about yeah. um, just remember the 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 memories that you used to have with your parents going with them to work? Uh, one sticks out. 
for me was um, going to Mum to the Tower Hotel and she was a cleaner and we'd just play on the post mix and just do like rocket fuel post mix. Oh, yes, that's fun. It's just Hudson's memories <laughs> of when he thinks back to when he's a kid. Look how bored he is. I know. He's, he's in not a, impressed he's by in this a, at all. a metropolitan radio <laughs> station and would rather be anywhere, anywhere. else. <laughs> he's just shy. <laughs> he's just being shy. He'll, he'll warm up. Yeah. No, he's just Brilliant. like us. He wants the show to end. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, Can you wrap this up? <laughs> We're like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're contractually obliged to stick till nine. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Gov, we wish you all the best uh, in the next couple of weeks with your personal training, but also I know you'll be celebrating also with JK and the rest yeah. of the team, and hopefully you get a win this weekend for a big guy. Yeah, I hope so as well. To be um, be a big one for us, and uh, hopefully all the t- fans turn out and, uh, and send him off. Good yeah, on you, mate. Thanks, Good man. Thanks, Gav. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Time to head over the East Coast and catch up with our good friend from the Dockers, Griffin Lowe. Come in, Griff. G'day, guys. Here you go. Oh, hello, oh, Griff. Griff. We're yeah, wonderful. Hey, I'm, I'm wondering um, with your podcast, now that David Money's yeah. retiring, what happens? You, is there another old guy at Fremantle you can throw <laughs> into the mix? Oh, Sean. You're too busy. I don't, think there is, I don't think there is an older guy at Fremantle. That bloke's a fossil, so. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it would just uh, have to be Justin Longyear, okay. wouldn't it? Longy Longprong. <laughs> he long I don't think that. I don't think everybody calls him that publicly, Sean. <laughs> no. I think that well, might just, just be you in the showers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not upset with the nickname. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we're going to change uh, tack here very quickly. Uh, <laughs> what's going on for the day, uh, Griff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not bad. That's not bad, Shorty. Um, oh no, not, not not a lot. We've um. Yeah, touched in last night to Melbourne, so um, we've got a captain's run today down at Port Melbourne. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, run a, run a few laps, get get the get the body movement, and uh, yeah, start uh, getting the focus down to the dogs. What's a captain's run? What if a captain makes a run? <laughs> it, it actually, I can know, I just I, jump I, in here, Griff? It yeah. started many years ago because this is a rugby uh, union thing, rugby league yes. thing. So they used to have their last training session. They just call it the captain's run. So it's really light base. But anyway, Griff, over to you. What you actually do? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's answered my question. So I never actually understood why it was. Yeah, because no, I didn't it know it's make, whether the, the, the captain makes you do it. I think Jason I guess, Webber brought it into Freemantle and called it the captain's run there, Griff. Oh, I reckon everyone around the league calls the captain's run. Yeah. It's just David day before the game. You pretty much just go on. Well, some people do, um, or different clubs do whatever, but for us, we did go through a few drills and whatnot. Other times, it's just your own time and you, and you do whatever, but... Still to this day, the captain doesn't make me run. So, not sure what. <laughs> and also, does it because it's called the captain's run? Does the captain have to be really enthusiastic about mm. it? Oh, the captain, captain always is generally, but oh. yeah, you, you know they don't so. want to do it. Yeah, deep down they don't. You're right. Nah. So after the captain's run, do you head down to uh, Port Melbourne Beach and is that where it is? And uh, put the budgies on and go for a swim. Um, no, nah, God no. You should see the weather out here. It's shocking. <laughs> yeah, I'd be no, I'd be no chance. Um, no, pretty much just, yeah, finish the captain's run, um, which is around lunchtime, and um, get a bit of treatment and massage towards the afternoon, and oh, um, okay. yeah, just do your own devices, pretty much. Yeah, Chill out as you would. Do you pick your own parlour, or what do you, like, which one do you go into? <laughs> yeah, got, got, got one lined up on Chapel Street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, the professional ones always have the blinking lights. Pretty so, simple, yeah. Yeah, get in there. <laughs> and it's no weird, because there's a hole for your head, and there's also another hole a little bit down. Further. Yeah, I've always wondered what that one's for. <laughs> 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 it's just starting to work it out. I oh, know, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, oh, you'll figure it out eventually. Now, Griff, it's a massive game against the Western Bulldogs because they're not in terrible yeah. form at all. They can really slice teams up. And um, in recent weeks, the Fremantle Dockers haven't been travelling the way they should. No, for sure. Um, yeah, as you said, we haven't been travelling too well. And, um, yeah, they're coming into a flying doggies team that love uh, cutting up Teams at Marvel, so it's, uh, yeah, I think the latter was six, six v tenths, but mm. um, yeah, look, they're obviously a pretty, very dangerous side with a very strong midfield, and um, yeah, had a lot of experience kind of in bigger games, and yeah, it's something that we look forward to, and we uh, yeah, certainly want to make amends for the last couple of weeks just because we haven't played um, our, our, our style at all and haven't played to the best of our ability, so um, we're pretty, pretty disappointed with the past performances, but. Um, no, it's not panic stations. Not yet, anyway. But mm. um, no, we've, uh, no, we're looking forward to it. Now, the good news for you guys, of course, is that Marvel Stadium has a roof because we know that 
You guys can't play in the rain. It's just not possible. You can't do anything in the rain. You fall apart. Yeah, they're like gremlins. Can't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> so be pretty oh, happy no, about I... playing indoors. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah, it's the best. We had a um, our last main training session on uh, what was it Wednesday? It was we started hailing and stuff coming in yeah. sideways. So we were kind of saying, well, try try get the most out of it. You know, you never know what's going to be like game day, but you do know what it's going to be like game day at Marvel. Yeah. Cause it's, the roof on your head, so <laughs> uh, makes, it, makes, it, makes it a bit more simple. But no, uh, we we seem to um, play pretty well at Marvel, mostly. So um, yeah, we're uh, as I said, ex- excited for it, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. So I know that they'll they'll call a game off or or postpone it for lightning. Yes, lightning. Yep, yep. Hail. What about hail? No, you would have played in hail, oh, wouldn't you, Griff? Think, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I played a game in hail. Because it only hails for a period. Yeah. Well, because because I saw was it over east just recently there was um I think I might or what is it in America anyway the other day I saw an article and there was hail that smashed through windscreens so Ooh. that would yeah you would yeah, I mean imagine because you'd be like wouldn't know if you're marking a ball or an iceberg no, that'd be, <laughs> that, that, that'd be play on in Australia mate play on. <laughs> <laughs> I played junior netball in in hail in Esperance imagine yeah. what that was like oh, coming in sideways horrible yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We too. got we got the win. Don't worry about it. You've been down to Esperance, <laughs> taking it all in, Griff. Nah, no, nah, I've never been actually. Really? What pretty shark, pretty sharky down there. It is pretty it? sharky. Yep. No, yep. Been, been to Kalgoorlie, Griff? No sharks there. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, I've, been I've, clocked, there. I've clocked that city off. It's, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great joint. <laughs> got it all. It has got it all. Absolutely, Griff. And hopefully, Fremantle got it all tomorrow. When you yep. come up against the Western Bulldogs, mate, desperately need a win. And uh, just before you go, can you tell us whether you're playing forward or back? I just want to have a multi on. <laughs> um, yeah, probably forward, mate. I'll be, I'll be, I reckon I'll be up forward. So get around it. Get around in the well, big guys. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Is a Swiss Army knife? For That's right. Yeah, Griff can do anything. <laughs> Nathan, Matt, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.